the original missile, the AGM-88B-C, was designed to essentially go after the surface-to-air radars, um, but there was discovered vulnerabilities over the time, and the, and the Navy wanted to improve on that. So they moved forward with the baseline Argum, which addresses what we call geospecificity. Mm -hmm. I call it an electronic dog leash. It allows, it, it allows the, the missions to be able to be contained, if you will, within a certain area uh, based upon GPS uh, locations that you can actually put into the missile. Mm -hmm. So the missile won't fly out of that area. Um, very important from a Kosovo perspective when we were shooting those older missiles, the HARMS, mm -hmm. and they would lose track on the radar because the radars would shut down for survivability mm -hmm. and they would coast into other places where they really didn't want it to go. Mm -hmm. So that really established the first step, if you will, with respect to improvement of that capability through a program called Precision Navigation Upgrade mm -hmm. for, the, for the HARMS. But the Navy decided about two-thirds of the way through that, that wasn't good enough. We still want to hit radars that are shut down. Mm -hmm. So with that, they moved forward with the Argon program that then brought in an improved ARH, anti-radiation homing mm -hmm. uh, capability to be able to detect and find the, the, the targets, mm -hmm. and then be able to then turn on a millimeter wave radar terminal guidance for when they do shut down to be able to scan the ground pattern, find returns that look like either the radars, the tells, mm -hmm. or the support equipment, and to be able to guide on those and, and hit them. So it's, that's the transition from suppression of enemy air defenses where we get them to turn off the radar to the destruction or deed of enemy air defenses by actually hitting them and, and taking out either support equipment or actual radars for that process. So, so with that, the Navy's matured that concept over the, about the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and then as threats continue to evolve, um, and it's, this is the history of, if you will, warfare, you start seeing ranges becoming more prevalent because we want to have survivability associated with launch platforms. Mm -hmm. So, you need to be able to launch from outside that window that right, they're coming yeah. into. So we don't have to be shot. They they can't hit us when we're launching it down. It's really a sanctuary type of an environment to where you're shooting from. The first systems were baseline off the Harm missile, mm -hmm. and that technology was back in the late 70s, early 80s, mm -hmm. um, developing and then executing. And back in those days, the concept was really using mid-body wings to be able to maneuver the missile. The reality is it's, it's maneuverable, but it's very inefficient with respect to drag. Mm -hmm. So what we've done from that Argon missile to increase range and speed was take those mid-body wings off, go to aft actuators, and really sleek down the overall look of the system. And you've seen the model It looks out there. Com completely yeah. different. Very sleek, built for speed. And again, then we've repackaged all of the, that control section that was in the mid-body of that older missile, mm -hmm. moved it forward, reduced the space, and what we've really made room for is more propulsion because it's all about speed and range to the target. Uh, and that whole design is really surrounded around that. So on that, you'll also see some retractable lugs that we have on there. Mm -hmm. Those retractable lugs are designed to fall down after it's released, primarily to reduce drag, increase mm -hmm. speed and range. The ER version will be able to fit inside the F-35. That's a big deal for you Specifically guys. Specifically designed for that. We recognize it as a market opportunity. If we're going to do a missile, it needs to be able to adapt to future fighters and, and other types of aircraft. So, mm -hmm. absolutely. So what's what's kind of what kind of work have you guys done on ER so far? And what's kind of ahead for the rest of 2019 and into 20? Well, it, we're on contract right now with the U.S. Navy for the uh, engineering manufacturing development phase. Mm -hmm. uh, we're continuing to work with that. And then... Uh, we're looking forward to working with the Air Force as they continue to mature their program. Mm -hmm. Specifics haven't been released yet to the public, but those President's docs can start leading you to that mm -hmm. um, with confirmation from the Air Force at your leisure. <laughs> fair point, fair yeah. point. So with the, but for the, for the Navy side, for specifically for the Air, what are you moving to flight test later this year, soon, or where are you kind of at with that? Well, we're in the development phase, mm -hmm. so um, if you take a look at the overall program, it's rocket motors, new actuators. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're doing a lot of work in that area mm -hmm. uh, to be able to improve what I would consider the, the risk associated with the development program. So uh, that, that effort's ongoing with all of our subcontractors in those areas, mm -hmm. and uh, they're building up, even as we speak, um, those subcomponents for validation, testing, and, and verification. So as that moves forward, we'll continue to meet the Navy's requirement and timeline and schedule, mm -hmm. uh, and looking forward to doing our first uh, first flight test in the near future. So.